Hello, we are back again. Yeehaw. Talking about creating and maintaining a SAM plan. Lori, what is a SAM plan? So it's the it's the um, operational definition of what we're doing around SAM as opposed to the street strategic, which we looked at with the corporate governance process. So I tend to think of the SAM plan as an operating model. Okay. So if you think about, if you hear the term target operating model, mm -hmm. it's basically your SAM plan. Okay. In, in my head. Right, okay. Yeah. And, and I sort of, and, and I think an operating model, I tend to think about it in terms of people and partners, processes, tools, mm -hmm. and risk, data, just to make sure that you're clear about what you need. Yeah, I think, um, again, because if you're embarking upon it, hmm, it depends on, I think, your view and perspective. If you're doing this for the first time, absolutely, you need to baseline all of that stuff. Mm -hmm to make sure you know where you're going moving forward. Um, and then it becomes iterative thereafter. It's, it's, it's less of a sort of a discovery exercise, it's more a maintenance exercise as you move. Well, that's the idea. Until something changes in your business, or and then you go back to your corporate governance process, and the corporate governance process says, okay, we were, we were going for that North Star, mm -hmm. now we're going for that one over there. Yeah. In which case the, the plan then needs to change and then as a result of the plan changing all of the other stuff actually shifts as well yeah. and i think i think we tend to leave it so long that it feels like we're starting fresh rather than the iterative yes yes but this is this goes back to the one of the early conversations we had too about sort of you know being lean being mm. being agile mm. um yeah if, if you truly want to sort of adopt that spirit yeah. and attitude then you're going to have to I mean, that's a massive change, to be honest. Yeah. If your organisation is going down its DevOps journey, that's a massive change. Yeah. That's really going to impact your SAM plan. But anyway, let's. So, so the first thing, so the biggest process that leads into this is undoubtedly the corporate governance process, because that's where we figure out which North Star we're, or which mm. star we're marching towards. And then, as you say, there's a load of other stuff that happens that drives a load of improvement that then feeds back into the SAM plan. So in fact, we've got. I mean, if we count, we've got the we've got the process open in front of us. We've got seven processes leading into this, including the corporate governance process. But that's yeah. just a, an example of the iterative nature of yeah, the SAM yeah. And ITAM, so, isn't it? so that and I think that that highlights as well that the operations plan is is very much a living, breathing document. It's mm. not one of those things that you chisel in stone and don't touch again for another year. Mm. Um, you know, it it has to accommodate change in the organization so uh, um, yeah mm. so the first step is a risk assessment framework is a risk define or refine your risk assessment framework now this is one of those areas where a lot of IT asset managers have a tendency to think oh, I've got to do this and actually you don't mm -hmm. the odds are your 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 organization already has a risk assessment framework that you use and that you should use it's not even a matter of it's there so use it it's you should be using it because it's your organization's risk uh, risk assessment framework mm -hmm. so make sure you get that and then have a think about how you would apply that to it it asset management and it asset risks and opportunities because of course there's a lot of opportunities as well that mm. itam surfaces so you know it's, it's how do you capture at a high level what what the risks are that you need to manage and the opportunities so that you can actually benefit from IT asset management and drive that value. And I think I think there's a value too in acknowledging the stuff that you you know will be beyond you mm. as well. So it, it just helps to reinforce that scope and that that area of concern that is going to be laid at your door once you yeah. approach business as usual. Yeah. So it's uh, it's useful in that regard. Yes. So then we start thinking about our processes, and we're thinking about what it is. What handle do we handles do we need to turn in order to actually start driving some outputs and then producing our outcomes? So driving value, and and I think this is where we need to start thinking about. Um, I mean, we're pulling on ISO nineteen seven seventy here, aren't we? The operation. There's a list of operational processes in the back of that book mm -hmm. uh, that you need to think about, and you need to think about how improving or implementing the operations and the life cycle processes that drive change for your assets um, what are the impacts that change in those processes are going to mean on other parties 
what what change is that going to be in terms of um, the way other parties work? So how does those how do the changes that you need to drive impact the processes that other people perform? Mm -hmm. Um, what KPIs, how are you going to measure whether or not you're achieving your outcomes or whether you're achieving your process outputs? Um, and then we need to think about how, what we need from, again, going back to the operating model, what people do we need to run this? What mm. partners do we need to run this? What tools? What's our data and where is our data coming from? Mm -hmm. and, and how are we going to be managing our risks and opportunities, reali realising those opportunities and managing those risks within that framework that we've defined? And I, and I think too um, a great way to to sort of kick, get that ball rolling is to identify the use cases. Mm. So the use cases will I will flesh through or highlight um, that actually not every use case is addressed by a single process. You may have processes that will dip in and dip out and talk to each other or what have you. So that is an art in itself. And understanding uh, to your point too with the lists that you were you were running through is that some processes will have secondary objectives, some will be primary and some will be secondary. Um, you know, get those catalogued, get those understood. Um, and you're not just creating bits of activities here, there and everywhere that nobody engages with. If you can sort of streamline activity within a, a, wider, a higher or wider process. Mm. So talk to me about use cases. What do you mean by a use case? So a use case might be, uh, let me think, what would be, um, the, the, the way we did it, when I developed the maturity assessment, it was a, it was a guy called um, Aaron, the, the guy who coded the maturity assessment, um, did a thing as a, and put a job title in, mm -hmm. I want to be able to put job in so that I can achieve brackets, insert task here. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that, that starts the, the ball rolling with yeah. regards to what you need around process, what you need around tooling, what you need around data mm -hmm. to make it happen, mm -hmm. uh, people, etc. And it just it just mm -hmm. flushes that out. And what you may find is that um, if you're suitably high up, you might want to say, well, I want to process around um, making sure we don't put, uh, I don't know, a nice and software on the IT estate. But you may find that could be covered off by any, any one of a number of processes. Or a number of processes working together. Yes, exactly, exactly. So um, making sure that objective is addressed mm. throughout any sort of Samurai TAM solution, mm. um, because there are multiple points of entry, multiple points of exit onto the IT yeah. estate through yeah. through your activities, through your processes. Yeah. So. And that, that, that format that you mentioned, so as a stakeholder name, mm -hmm. I want to do a job in order to the out, the outcome or the output. And then you can also add, you know, I find it useful to say in a tool, because actually if you're a service management person, you don't want to be doing something in the SAM tool, you want to be doing it in the service management tool. Um, it's, they're called user stories, mm -hmm. and they're really powerful, well worth think, reading up about how to, how to do user stories and how to, do, how to, how to pull them out, because mm. they really can be very, just drive forward, a, a real a genuine understanding of how things need to work and what needs to happen and I, I mean that's a technique we use in our workshops isn't mm. it? so it's well worth investigating where, where I find it really powerful is when it comes to actually customizing a supported software catalog because you start to um, if you identify the system and data owners you, you know you can say right who's going or who is a user of a supported software catalog you can start to say well, what data do I need to interact with a supported software catalog as a you know as a consequence of the requirement that I need to fulfill mm. so um, apps packaging will want to know where the package is what package it is but the end user won't care about that yeah they'll just want to know the version and edition maybe yeah. at best and maybe the price and they can get get away with that and you just start to collect this data and that they form the columns of potentially a spreadsheet or a database yeah. that you want to roll forward yeah, with. No, absolutely. but you can do them for any process I mean they really mm. are great any process any system yeah so Right, so what else around do you need to think about? So thinking about scope then at that point, so mm -hmm. we have um, we might have set the scope or, or given broad outlines as to what we want the scope to actually be in the policy document, but to drill down and provide greater detail on that, what that looks like from an operational perspective is something that I think is worth, uh, is worth thrashing out in any sort of plan. Yeah. 
um, and also as well qualifying those areas that are out of scope and why they are out of scope. Um, again, too often gets missed and just left to assumptions. Yeah, and I think um, we call out the statement of applicability, which is something that's in ISO 19770, and what that does is it's effectively a process scope. So this is a, a document where you're stating we're going to be running or, or um, operating these processes as part of our management system. So, and then, and then the next thing we've got is conduct a SAM process maturity assessment. Now I sort of differ a little bit. Rory's put it in, in the SAM plan, but actually I find them really useful when I'm doing the vision and strategy. Because if you think about the vision and strategy that you know, we talked about in the corporate governance process, it's where I am now, where I need to be, and what the high level journey between the two, those two points looks like. And your maturity assessment, where you're thinking about what you do well and what you don't do well, is really useful when you're thinking about your current state. Where am I now? Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I guess it's, it's one of those, it's horses for courses, it's where, where you want it. Yeah. I, I guess the reason we have it here is because as part of the plan, I would expect to see some sort of a plan that actually lists the processes that I'm going to take forward. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, and an yeah. assessment of where each of those processes is in, in yeah. your current state. So, so probably going into a bit more detail than we would have when we were originally doing the current state assessment in the vision mm. strategy. And, and being quite specific around the processes. You know, what does my software request process look like? Mm. What level of maturity does that have? What level of maturity do we want it to have? Mm. And, and then you can start mapping out, well, how, how, what are the steps we can take in order to shift from one level of maturity to another level of maturity? And you can do that for all your processes. And I think it's, um, and I, I like to think that actually that's what comes quite neatly out of the, uh, the Sam Charter Process Maturity <laughs> Assessment. But um, one, one thing that's worth highlighting from an anecdotal point of view, um, particular client I had, Initially, they were waving, um, you know, 19770 was, yeah, this is the way, this is the future, we are going for level four, this is it, yes. Um, and then when they realised actually how much work was involved mm -hmm. to get there, there was um, a statement added into the, I think it was actually into the policy, not into the plan, to say um, a cost-benefit analysis will be conducted before we leap to a next level of maturity with a given process to make sure that we're actually getting benefit from mm -hmm. taking that next step. And I think this comes back to one of my favourite concepts, which is good enough. Yeah. You don't need to be perfect. Your processes don't need to be perfect, but they do need to be good enough. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see, see what other goodies we've got here. So we've got a, a gap analysis. analysis. My goodness. They sound so technical, don't they? Gap analysis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a gap analysis. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're just saying, I'd like it to be this way and it's not. <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> so, but again, you know, do it systematically. So just as for, um, you know, when we were pulling together earlier in the plan, I said, you know, think about your process impact, your role impact, what KPIs do you need? What, you know, what your, um, what risks are you addressing? You know, just be really systematic about, okay, we need, we're here now and we need to be there. Mm -hmm. He, and, and at a high level, this is how we need to get across. Yeah. How we need to bridge that gap. That's all the gap analysis is. But yeah. again, they're very powerful. Yeah. Um, and we do a form of gap analysis all the way through. So, you, so your so your vision and strategy is a form of gap analysis, but it's very high level. The one that is in the plan is sort of the next level down in terms of detail. And then you know you perform gap analysis between uh, sort of at a, at a graded level of detail as well, like. Later on, when we talk about the um, SAM tooling verification process, we perform gap analysis to determine whether or not our tool is doing everything that we need it to be. Yeah. So, you know, you just start at the top, be quite high level, and then work your way down, because that, that way you can bring people with you, take them, as I said, take them on a journey. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and you play to people's strengths then as well, mm. because if they are without wishing to sound rude or disrespectful but if they are if they are lower down the order it's because uh, the, the employment hierarchy whatever you want to call it they are there because they're they're subject matter experts at their relative area exactly. and that's they're, and that's where they want to be as well potentially yeah, yeah they want that they need that level of detail whereas if yeah. you're talking to somebody in the c-suite they want the high level stuff they yeah. don't want the level of detail and they do just want that broad brush okay this is where we are now this is where we need to be this yes. is how we get there. Yes. And then, you know, and then your next level of managers down will want this 
the sound plan level of detail mm. the processes okay this is how we need to change the processes yeah and then your process owners or your practice owners will want the next level of detail okay this is how we need to change the request fulfillment process mm. so uh yeah you know i think it's it asset managers we just dive into the detail and it's in some cases, it's a mistake. Well, this is, I know, in, in many cases, because again, this is this thing of if detail doesn't necessarily traverse well up, up the ladder. Exactly, it just does not. Uh, acronyms, all of that, it's yeah. like people no. don't, they don't want, they don't want to do the C-suite, yeah. those acronyms, as it were. So, from this process, Rory. Yours. Where do we go? Oh, my God. Well, it depends on who you ask. Um, if I was to ask you. Yeah. It would be into, into every process known to man. <laughs> No, it wouldn't. Well, okay, it would be. But I, but again, I would be saying, okay, let's think through the operating model. What what do we need to get our people in a position where they can do what they need to do? What do we need to do to get our tool in a position where it's performing correctly? Yes. What do we need to do to get our partners performing whatever part we need our partners to do? How do we get our data in a fit state? And how do we and how do we manage our risks? And do you know what I'm looking at here? We I'm sorry, sorry for for those watching. We've got a particular process in front of us on a laptop just down here. Is we've got create, maintain a supported software catalogue. We should be qualifying the software that we're actually looking after in scope, and that's mm. not on here. I think we skipped that page. <laughs> no, we did it in the corporate governance, didn't we? So there is a. I'll have to check. I'll have to check. We've talked about scope. I know we've talked about scope. I know we've talked about, yeah, but I mean, at an application level, then at that point, we're creating and maintaining the supported software catalog. Oh, uh, I see. So right. that's, um, yeah. and I think that's the way I had it in the old in the old kit, but anyway. That's... So fundamentally, an awful lot yeah. of activity comes out of this process, which I guess is why it's called a sound plan process. And to be honest, if you, from this, this is still high level. This is not you do not produce a project plan out of this. No. Because you've still got a load more work to do, pulling out some of the finer detail about the actual steps. So, you know, you from this process you can then say, right, this is what our tooling looks like. So here's a tooling strategy and then becomes a set of steps to actually implement a tool properly. Oh, so gosh, it's only yeah. then you know, so the project plan itself, which is one reason why I sort of say I I quite prefer target operating model. Mm -hmm. as a title because it doesn't give you that sense of here's a here's a plan you know it's no there's no sense of project plan about a target operating model it's mm -hmm. sort of it's quite area fairy and quite high level yeah um yeah. but yeah so you know don't feel that what you're producing with this process is a project plan it's not it's no. still pretty high level because there's still a load of work to be done taking it down to the next level of detail to just make sure that you're on the right track and that people are with you. And I think that's one of the questions actually we ask in the maturity assessment is, do you have an assessment of, well, certainly what good looks like, but also do you know when Sam has gone from project to BAU? Right. And I'd say that's when you get to a point where... Um, yeah, the project plan is tick box. Is, is perhaps that the number of suggested outpourings of processes we've got yeah. on currently gets, gets reduced because you... A lot of these, I, I would suggest, are are instantiations of given processes as opposed to. Um, That's a good word. Um, carry on regardless, you know, yeah. and and business as usual. There's um, we've got we've got a lot of sort of kick, kickstarty project things there. Rory is trying to imagine how he's going to model this process in his ecosystem. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty important process. It's pretty central. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve. We hand out apparently to twelve, twelve processes from this, yeah. and. Uh, I suppose we'll forgive you if we don't have twelve ones coming out at the end of this. Process. Yeah, imagine. Uh, anyway, so that's that's the the sand plan process. It's it sits below the corporate governance process in terms of detail, but it's probably. It's, it's certainly not a project plan yet. Yeah, it's the, it is that bridge between operations and strategy, yeah. so it is quite important to get yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So, good luck with it. All right, we'll see you around. Mm -hmm.